Hello everyone, this is Jason from Prime Time Aquatics, and in this video, we are gonna be bringing you some really cool Asian biotopes. These are massive tanks with some huge fish, and what's really cool is a lot of these fish we can commonly find in the aquarium hobby, sold at pet stores, but we finally get to see them growing to their full potential, so stay tuned. So these are some very large Asian biotope aquariums. This tank that we're looking at here was well over a thousand gallons, maybe 1,500, maybe even 2,000 gallons. Here we've got some tinfoil barbs. I've done species profiles on a lot of the fish featured in this video. I will put them in the description below in case you want more information, including the clown loaches, tinfoil barbs, garamis, Chinese algae eaters, as we'll see shortly. But there were some really, really cool tanks here. Massive tanks for some very large fish. You take a fish like the tinfoil barb, we've talked about it before, they get huge. But these ones made my foot-long tinfoil barbs look kind of tiny. Very big, you can see here they're very relaxed in their larger tank. When keeping these fish, this is the way to go. Here there was a giant garami, and this fish was huge. We have an 18-inch tilapia in our fish room, and this fish dwarfed that by a large margin. Most sources will tell you they can get up to 24 to 28 inches, and this fish was every bit that size. A uh, very thick-bodied fish, needs a massive aquarium. And this is something you may find in a pet store for sale, but please understand. And we're looking at a tank here, just estimating, I don't know exactly how large it was, but I, I would say somewhere in that 1,500, 2,000 gallon range is probably a pretty solid estimate. And this fish needed all of it. It was an absolutely monstrous fish. Really cool. Again, we've done species profiles on garamis before. Not the giant garami, of course, but this is a great fish. What I really appreciated about the setups that they had here was the relatively low light that was going into each one of these tanks. And I've said it in the past, and I will say it again. I think a lot of us in the hobby, we tend to over illuminate our tanks because we want to see the fish but I don't necessarily think that accurately reflects what's going on in nature. And because of that, we don't always get proper fish behavior. In these tanks, the lights were not nearly as intense in any of the tanks that we looked at. And I think that goes a, a little ways in making the fish appear more, more calm and certainly more secure. But this giant garami was absolutely huge. One of the things I found so interesting when we're looking at these fish as we go through these massive Asian biotopes, so many of these fish are for sale at local pet stores, but I'm hoping what we can do in this video is really allow people to have a proper appreciation for how large a tank some of these fish need to be properly housed. And the size of this tank really lends well to these fish. Anytime you can keep over a dozen tinfoil barbs, this giant grami, uh, the datnoid's kind of peeking his head out over there. Some clown loaches. There are some clown knives that we're going to see here shortly. They are absolutely humongous. But a tank this size that can comfortably house that many fish of this magnitude, it's really a sight to behold. And if you're anywhere near the Cleveland area, I highly recommend check out the Cleveland Aquarium because it is a really cool place to see these fish. And you, it's so hard to appreciate how big this giant garami was by looking at it on video and not having somebody stand next to it. It was, like I said, every bit the 24 to 28 inches that these fish are uh, advertised to grow. Uh, it, was, it was definitely that large. Of course, in us being fish people, we go to an aquarium like this and we're looking at the setup. And the setup is nice because it looks like it's really easy to maintain. We've got a little bit of, of crushed rock at the bottom, some pebbles. You've got this central structure. Of course, there's not going to be a lot of greenery and live plants because you've got fish like tinfoil barbs and the giant grami, which would absolutely love to chow down on some live plants. So that's going to be lacking in a display tank like this. And here we've got the clown knives. This is a really cool fish. And again, this is one of those fish that you sometimes see for sale in a pet store. And people will buy these at maybe six or seven inches, think they can put them in a 55 gallon or so, and they're gonna be fine. This fish can get up to somewhere in the 30 to 36 inches in length sort of size. And I would say these ones were probably pushing somewhere around about 30 inches or so. They were very, very large fish. Uh, really awesome fish. Now, they're not going to be super active during the day when the lights are on. They, they don't have very good eyesight, so they're going to tend to chill out a little bit more. Uh, they tend to be more active as the lights dim. 
these fish can be a real challenge to keep them for some people. Uh, some people have been able to get them on pelleted foods and things like that, but for the most part, they like to have live foods. And so that can be a little bit more of a challenge, but they're really cool fish. You just have to have an absolutely massive tank. And most people, they're gonna buy their tanks from a pet store and they're gonna be those standard, you know, even a 180 or 220 wouldn't be large enough for a clown knife. And here we have Datanoid. Again, this is a fish where you'd find them in a pet store, uh, but they're gonna hit that 16 to 18 inch mark. And I would say again, that this fish was every bit that 18 inch mark. Really cool, just kind of hung out, chilled out. Like this is another fish that would appreciate some live food from time to time a little bit easier to get on prepared foods and let's say a clown knife but once again i just think it's a really cool example of a fish you would see at a pet store and what's cool about all of these fish is you're looking at fish that are reaching their full potential so often we see these reports like oh i've got a tinfoil barb that's 10 inches or i have a clown knife that's almost two feet and we don't get to appreciate how big they can actually grow this was a really cool rainbow display tank I really like rainbows. I know when they're young, they kind of start out, they're all silvery and their heads are tiny and their eyes are tiny. And for some people, it's not quite their fish, but I think you really have to have some patience with rainbows to get them to really color up. I thought this display tank was interesting. You can see kind of like that spotlight effect. So you can see the shimmering off the side of the fish, which I thought was interesting. But once again, Overall, for the most part, the lights were relatively subdued and you've got some really cool, really nice looking fish. Now these are fish you could you could clearly put in an average size fish tank if you had somewhere in that 75 gallon, preferably a six foot tank, like maybe a 125. This tank was a cylindrical tank. Again, I'm just guessing on the tank sizes, the volumes. It was a tall tank, I would say somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe 300, 350 gallons, just because it was so tall maybe slightly larger. But what was interesting is that I'm not a huge fan of the circular tanks just because it distorts the view of the fish so often. But for these fish that are active, like tinfoil barbs that we just saw, the rainbows, it does allow them to have that more, that schooling or shoaling motion or, or behavior a little bit more than perhaps a square or rectangular tank would have. But really cool fish. You see the colors are absolutely wonderful. These were big rainbows. Uh, they were probably in the neighborhood on average i would say four or five inches at least maybe slightly larger so again when you've got these larger tanks and you can allow these fish to reach their full potential it's really quite an awesome sight i like this view here because you get to see all the colors and the variation really cool to see and as we go through this video, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. What were some of your favorite fish to see? Were there any display tanks that you really enjoyed? Would, these, would this be the type of place you'd love to go and check out for yourself? If you have a favorite rainbow, put that in the comments section. Would love to hear from you. Get your ideas, get your thoughts on anything that you thought was really cool. And this is a, a view where we're kind of panning back a little bit. Just to see the colors, this is a tank that really motivated me to want to keep more rainbows. I have, I've kept some in the past. I really haven't kept a lot of them, but we've got some tanks that are set up right now, some 125s where we need some type of a midwater fish. I think it would be cool to add a group of rainbows and have that kind of color going on in some of our tanks. And I know the size and the shape of the fish. They are certainly not for everybody, but I certainly appreciated them. And if you've never had rainbows before, they're really not that hard to keep. They generally eat just about everything, at least in my experience, the rainbows that we've had. They ate flake food, they ate mini pellets. They were pretty active in mid-water in terms of water parameters. We had no problems keeping them in a pH as high as an eight, which is really where most of our fish room is. They'd probably prefer it a little bit lower than that, but anywhere around average water parameters, let's say neutral, 76, 78 degrees. Really cool fish, not difficult to keep. Breeding them is a little bit of a different story. It's not as simple as let's say some of the cichlids, but they are definitely a rewarding fish. Now this last tank had a very cool mix of fish. A lot of red panda barbs. The hyphen banded sharks were awesome. There were some big dojo loaches in here. As a fish keeper, I'm looking at this tank and this was a massive tank. It was very, very long. I would say at least 12 to 15 feet long. It was very large. You see the hyphen banded shark here. That's usually about the size you might find in a pet store. So somewhere in that four or five inch range, maybe slightly smaller, but this one was maybe somewhere between four to six inches. You see a lot of the barbs here. And what was cool about them is they were actually breeding. Now check this out. This is a an adult hyphen banded shark. And again, when you buy these fish small, like, oh yeah, I've got a 75 gallon. It should be fine. Trust me, a 75 gallon is not fine for this fish. It's hard to pick up the scale of just how massive that, that particular fish is, 
but I would say easily, easily, easily in the two foot range, if not larger. It was a massive fish, very cool. But again, you need an absolutely enormous tank to really house them properly. Barbs were cool because you're, you're looking at, I actually saw babies kind of hiding out in the rocks. You can see the dojo loach kind of swimming over here by the, the large hyphen banded shark. As a fish keeper, I'm looking at this tank and I'm looking at all the rocks on the bottom and I don't know about everyone watching, but I'm thinking, how are we going to keep the substrate clean and not have nitrates build up? Obviously, when you've got a large tank like this in a public aquarium, they've got ways to deal with it a little bit more efficiently. But for me, I mean, obviously it's not something you can gravel vac and kind of go between the rocks and get all the detritus out and everything. Clearly they figured it out because the tanks are looking good. The fish look fantastic. They are in very good shape. I like this display. I found myself looking at it a lot, mainly because of this guy here, the dojo loach. There was actually, I saw two of them in the tank. These were really big fish, at least a foot, maybe slightly larger, but really cool. And these are again, our fish you find in a pet store and you're like, oh, this will be awesome. And you see, oh, it can grow up to a foot long. And we're thinking, okay, well that 55 gallon should suffice this is a big fish and it's it's a it's a larger thicker fish that deserves a larger tank they're goofy viewers all the time talk about how they're one of their favorite fish and how they're just their behaviors are kind of silly it was really entertaining to watch i think that's why i spent so much time near this tank really cool so this was the cleveland aquarium this was the asian biotopes that they had i hope you enjoyed it if you did share subscribe and we're going to be bringing more of these types of videos in the future we'll see you in the next one